Amos chapter 19, verse 16. And oh, hello, are you joining us? There's plenty of room. You don't have to sit in a circle if you don't want to. You can grab a chair and observe from over there. Great, welcome. So, a moment of reflection as always. Think about your day as you meditate. Ask yourself, was I resentful? Selfish? Dishonest? I'm afraid. Do I owe an apology to someone? Have I kept something to myself? Have I been kind and loving towards all? What could I have done better? If you have found something, Ask forgiveness. Choose forgiveness. Be ready to let it go. Have the intention to forgive others. And to forgive yourself. Let's say the words together. Grant us the serenity to accept the things we cannot change, the courage to change the things that we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Take your time. You can stay over there if you like, but that chair will be waiting for you when you want to sit down. Step two, someone. Oh, believe in a higher power that can restore your sanity. Uh, step seven. Oh, humbly ask the higher power to remove your defects. And step nine. Make direct amends where possible and not harmful to others. Thank you, Leo. This is a fellowship of men and women who come together to share their experience, their strength and their hope with each other. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. I'm Sahana, and I'm your group secretary. And I'm an alcoholic. Hi, Sahana. This is a share session. So, who wants to share something? I'll start, since I'm new to this group. I'm Chloe. I'm an alcoholic. 
Hi, Chloe. Chloe. I've decided to make this scoop a new permanent home. I was observing the last couple of weeks, so most of you will have met me. But I know Jake from a group we used to attend in the city together. That was two years ago, and I was in that group for five years, so that makes seven since I last had a drink. For those of you that don't know me, I am a two-time divorcee, adulterer, then adultery, no kids. I work as a corporate litigator. I defend the big guy from the little guy. Basically, I lie and manipulate for people that pay me very well to do it. And I'm proud of what I do. It takes a lot to be successful, and I am. What else? Um, I'm thinking about getting a cat. Mm, I took the cats. Who is you? Uh, does that mean I can't own a cat? As long as you clean your hands between seeing the cat and coming here. I'll be coming straight from work. I'm not going to take the cat to work with me. Chloe, please carry on. A lot of people don't remember their childhood. Not in any great detail. But I remember everything. I remember the door handles in our house. I remember the way the carpet felt between my toes. I remember exactly how many steps it would take to cross from the kitchen through the dining room to where the TV was. My father was hardworking. And I, I always, always admired that about him. He never smiled. He would come back from work and get his briefcase and place it on the dining table. Then he'd unpack these reports and these files and he would sit down and just work. My mum would bring him his dinner, which she would have kept warm for him in the oven on a low heat. Then later she would bring him a cup of tea. And he would just work. Until it was time to go to bed. And then he would go to the office the next day. My mom and I would be in the other room watching television until I had to go to bed. But sometimes, sometimes I would get up from the sofa in front of the TV and go and stand in the doorway to the dining room. My father would have his back to me, but so he wouldn't know I was there. But I would just watch him. He never moaned or complained about his workload or the length of time it took him or about not getting to spend enough time with us. He just worked. He knew that was what he needed to do to... It was what he needed to do. It was his duty. And all the way through high school, I worked hard. And I wanted him to be proud of me. I wanted him to notice how well I was doing. And then I got into university. I got A's in all my A-levels and I was going to study law. I had done well. And I took my results home. My mum was beaming from ear to ear. My father said, He said, he'd always wished I'd been a boy. <laughs> I don't know why he chose that moment to tell me, but that's what he said. Seven years ago, I was working on a wrongful dismissal case. I was defending a large company. You'll have heard of them. 
like client didn't have much of a case. But I had to find one and I was doing a pretty good job. There were loopholes in the contract and we'd highlighted these to the other side so there was a reasonable chance we were going to keep it out of court. Anyway, um, it's a Tuesday. Could have been any day really but I remember it's a Tuesday. I'd gone to a bar somewhere in the city. Not one of my usual places, just somewhere I could go sit at the bar and drink. I'd earned my trophy that day, just as I earned it every day. I don't know how long I was in there for when I was snocking back white wine and rum and I'm, I'm drunk, just on my own at the end of this bar, drunk. The chairman of this company, the one I'm defending, he walks in and he sees me and I see him. And at first he goes to smile at me and I think wave, but then he looks at me a bit harder and his smile just softens and he backs up a step. I think he was going to come over and say hello, but he backs up a step. He doesn't just stop himself from walking, he actually moves backwards away from me. I managed to convince myself that I was seeing things, but the next morning, I was taken off the case. The case never went to court in the end. They used all the ideas I had to stop it in its tracks, so that was good, I guess. That was the last day that I drank. I've wanted to every day since then, but that was the last time. Seven years, two months, and 11 days ago. Thank you, Chloe. Uh, how can you find the steps? Um, well, the first three were the hardest. I have to have confidence in my own power, my own strength. Do you, do you believe in God? Well, when I was about six months in, I almost, I got all dressed up to go for a run and I was leaning on my window ledge inside, tying the laces on my trainers when all of a sudden, I guess you might say, the heavens opened and started to throw down with rain. I stood there at the window, annoyed that I couldn't, that I was trapped inside. Instinctively, I went to the wine rack, but I got rid of them all. There was nothing there. So I looked back outside, out the window again. And I think maybe I'll just run to the off license but I don't want to go out because of the rain. And it just clicks. I am powerless if nature, mother nature, if, if she wanted to, she could just sweep me away. So I just sat there at the window ledge, what seemed like hours and stared at the rain coming down. What about when the rain stopped? Did you, did you go to the off license? No. I made a searching and fearless moral inventory. <laughs> Step four. I had a bit of a breakthrough this week. Sorry, I, it's a, not much of a share, but I can tell you if you want. Sorry, Mike, do you mind? Oh, 
Uh, sorry. Uh, Michael? Alcoholic? Hi, Mike. Michael. Uh, can I? Please. I was uh, walking home from work. This is the job you just got? Yeah. How's it going? Yeah, it's, uh, it's going good. Uh, anyway, I was uh, walking home and uh, I was tired. Uh, working with your hands, they, they get sore. And uh, you know, I, I go home the, the same way. And uh, I go home past that, uh, that, that new thing on the old wall by the, by the station, you know? The child. Uh, no, the, the graffiti? Yeah, it's art. It's called the child. Whatever. And, uh, I have to go past it to get to get home. And, uh, there's it's like these load of people there, just staring at it, you know, t taking pictures and that. <laughs> and I think I uh, can't be bothered going that way, you know. So I go another way, uh, a, a longer way, uh, <coughs> off the main road. But that way takes me past, uh, past the engine house, which is uh, it's, it's one of my old pubs. I didn't think about that. And I can... I can see it coming. I can see it coming from a few houses away. And I think... Fuck. I should just... turn around and... go the other way. But then... Think of all those fucking people. So I, I keep going, uh, keep my head down, D double time it past the pub. <laughs> Think I'm about to make it, and I hear my mate Coogs. He's he shouts, uh, Mike! Mike! And uh, I look up. Uh, I knew it was him, but... Uh, I, I didn't want to be rude, you know? So, uh, Coog says, Mike, we're... Where you been? Where you been? So, he, he knows I'm off it. He's, he's not trying to start anything. But he's a bit pissed, you know? But he's, he's not trying to start anything. So I'm standing there. My hand in my pockets, because they're sore. I'm thinking, God, I'd just love to be in there right now. Because Coogs, he, he, he's right, you know. I haven't seen the guys in a while. My, I can feel my throat, it's... 
I'm gasping. I'm, I'm, f- I'm feeling around in my pocket for, for some money, you know. But then I, then I find my, my sixty-day chip. It's not attached to anything, it's, it's just sitting there in my pocket. And I, I look up at, at Cooth, you know, and I just say, I can't do it, mate. He, he just nods at me, you know. And I'm back, so, so I'm, you know, it doesn't look like I'm being disrespectful. And then, then I walked home. That's great, Mai. Thanks for sharing. I know who does those. What? The child, you know, the graffiti, and the other one, the, the first one. It was called Losing. It was about the death of a loved one. Yes, that's it, Losing. I know who did them. How can you know you did them? They're on signs. Just no. It was definitely a woman. Not necessarily. It was a woman. Uh, what are we talking about? Um, here. All I'm saying is, I know who it is and it could be a man. What are you saying? You don't know if the person is a man or a woman? It's a woman. Well, I know whether it's a man or a woman. <laughs> I'm just not there. So, this is the first one. It's like a journey. Why not? You follow it from the top of the L, and the grief is gone by the end of G. See? It's part of the allure. I've got pictures of the new one, too. It's definitely by a woman. The whole thing is from a woman's perspective. Well, I've not seen anything about this. It's everywhere, mate. I don't think this has anything to do with Michael Sher. Or Chloe's for that matter. Sorry, guys. Do you mind if we stay focused on the shares? It's great that we all get on, but I want us to have the opportunity to reflect on where we're at. We are here to support each other. Remember? What brazy? Any thoughts? <clears throat> um. Chloe's journey to her acknowledgement of her higher power is uh, fascinating, and and wonderful. I have a very honest and open relationship with God. I am very clear about who he is to me. But we must all recognize it is important that we have different relationships with him. To Chloe, she, God, is Mother Nature. Someone put it another way. When we admit to our own powerlessness, we have to submit to a higher power that can... Protect us from ourselves. Right. But that doesn't have to be God, or Allah, or Mother Earth, as in Clary's case. Any other thoughts? Chloe said that the first three steps grouped together for her. I found the same. I've always found that the word power can be substituted for control in some respects. My job requires me to be powerful. I have a lot of staff relying on me and looking to me. I have to maintain my own belief in myself. But control is something I could relinquish if I choose to. So you choose to be powerless? 
I suppose I do. Yes. But a higher power is, by definition, more powerful than you. I'm saying I can choose to control my addictions. But by relinquishing control in that area, I can focus my own power in other areas. Yeah, I understand that. Oh, I understand. I just don't agree. As Noisy said, it's a personal thing. If it's right for Jake, it can't be wrong. No, it's not right for me. But it's right for Jake. You're fucking here. Abby? Don't you fucking Abby me! This isn't the place for this. No, because this place is sacred. <laughs> your fucking family! Your actual family, Peter! Your daughter, whose savings account you stole from for this. Think about what you're doing, Abby. Don't you dare. Don't you dare say that to me. Think about what I'm doing. When was the last time you thought about what you were doing to me? There are other people in the room. For fuck's sake, pay attention to what you Why want. are they more important to you than... Why is this more important to you than your own fucking daughter? Abby, come on. No. No. You should tell them. <laughs> I mean, this is a fucking confession or whatever the fuck you call it, right? You should tell them. Tell them how far away you are from being cured. I'm never going to be cured. Abby. That's for fucking sure. These people, these people that mean so much to you, you should tell them. Come on, tell them how you stole money from your own daughter's bank account so that you could get pissed. But it was my my fucking money. I chose to give it to her. You chose to get. Oh, you oh. You chose to give it to her also, then you chose to take it away again so that you could get your fucking fix. And that's okay. And you're fucking hurt, that is okay. No, of course it fucking isn't, that is why I'm here. But it isn't helping, is it? You have no idea. What's he gonna do? I don't know, I don't know him. No, you don't know him? I just met him tonight. Mm -hmm. Well, and I am sick of picking up the pieces! Come back. I need you. I can't do this without you. I know I need them too, but I need you and I need You them. need beer more! I need beer, but I'm trying not to need beer. You don't try hard enough, did you? No, just get off me. Get off me! <laughs> Peter! You don't fucking know! Yeah, I do.
Seven. Humbly ask the higher power to remove your defects. Step eight. Make a... Make a list of the people you have harmed and make amends. Step nine. Make direct amends where possible and not harmful to others. Step ten. Continue to take personal inventory. Step 11, improve your consciousness of the higher power. And finally, step 12, have a spiritual awakening. Thanks, Violet. I think it's important we check in with the 12 steps every day. But when we encounter something like, like what just happened, we need to lean on each other more than usual. Peter's decided to leave us. Hopefully not permanently. I still think we should have called the cops. That won't help him. It's domestic abuse, Sahana! Can't you Liv. see that? That won't help oh. her either. Fuck. Perhaps it's a good time we take a little break now anyway. Everyone grab some coffee and some juice. Oh, and um, Jake brought in some sausage rolls. I, uh, I can't take the credit. My other half is taking up cooking. Oh, the ones on the left, uh, the slightly darker looking ones, are vegan. Vegan sausage rolls? Homemade vegan sausage rolls. What is the world coming to? Don't eat vegan. I think it's pretty cool what you did. The uh, cookbook was a Christmas present from her mother. Two Christmases ago. She was always nagging us about you now too much. So I think that was the motivation behind the present. I don't know why she started taking it seriously now though. It works well for us. I can see that.
She hits me all the time. She gets frustrated because I keep letting her down. Then she hits me. Sometimes I hit her back. I can't make you safe. I wish I could just die, but I'm not strong enough to kill myself. Would you kill me? Please. There's a, um, there's a bridge over, over a railway a few miles away. We could go there now. I'll stand on the bridge, it's easy, I've done it before. You have to push me, I can't jump. That's for everyone. Professor Abby and the Dean. I need to stop. You won't do it. You're not strong enough to take a life. I can't get involved with that shit anymore, mate. Because I'm clean. And that means everything. I got a proper job in. And I got like goals and shit. What I think is important is that man cannot save himself. What, so what are you saying? Man, man, man is inherently selfish? No, I'm not saying that every single person in the world is selfish. You're selfish. Great. So Steve, now you're saying about my wife. Hey. Did you find what you're looking for?
Really is an arsehole. Hey, be kind. Just um, poisoning my lungs. To you. I use it as an ash tree. I can see through it. It's like I'm one of the many cigarettes I smoke a day. My. Partner. She drinks still. So there are always empty bottles lying around the house. Can we maybe not tell anyone about this? I didn't even want to be group secretary. They just nominated me. I think because they think I'm sensible. If only they knew, right? We should get back inside. Michael, are you okay? They call again. Michael, part of your personal inventory is thinking about the people that you've harmed and choosing to decide what you do now or in the future could put you or others into harm's way. No one finds this easy. That's why we need each other. But ultimately, if someone is asking you to do something or you're thinking of doing something that could put you on the harm's way. Brazil, wow. Um, anyway, me and the boys were just saying and only the top 5% of schools should be allowed to send students to university. Do you really believe that? Sure. And how do you know which are in the top 5%? <laughs> Everyone knows what the best schools are. Yeah, yeah, like Eton and Harrow. Yes. I mean, others as well. I, I guess it's like the top 100 schools or something. Yeah. And what does everyone else do? National service. National service. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. I guess I heard you read it. It's called 13th Stepping. I... I think he thinks because she used to be a prostitute, she must, you know, be a, a slut. 
what he misses is just because a person used to sell sex doesn't automatically mean they are, you know, promiscuous. She, she's a lovely person. She just needed money. It was the easiest way for her to get it. Supply and demand. Guys, everyone grab their seats and we'll get started up again. Okay, we're all back and ready to start up again. So are we just not going to talk about Peter then? I don't think there's anything else left to say. Remember, we're all on our own journey. We need to respect that. I'd like to take a moment and see if anyone wants to say something. I would like to thank Jake's wife for the delicious sausage rolls. I'll pass that on, the Boise. Thank you. How come we've never had the pleasure of meeting her? Uh, she stays at home to take care of the kids when I come here. But you're in three groups. Three different meetings I go to. And she cooks for you. I don't ask her to do any of those things. She, uh, she just does them. Yeah, some women are more traditional. Some women are suckers. Listen, she does very well out of me. She, drives, she lives in a nice house. She drives a nice car. Oh, so she's just a possession then. That's not what I meant. Well, then tell us what you meant then. Live. I think you need to take a moment. You're upset about Peter and now you're taking it out on Jake. I met his wife at a social event last year. She seems very happy. Seems, seems very happy. Liv! <laughs> it's just that this is supposed to be a safe place. A place where we can come and be honest with each other. You were hit? Not like you were. I was exposed to it, but I was never hit myself. So something you'd like to share, Liv? I mean, it might help. I can do. Should I? If you don't mind. I'm Liv, I'm an addict. I live I'm a cross addict. I have multiple addictions. Mostly coke, crack and spirits. It doesn't really matter what it is so long as it promises to fuck my mind up. 
I started on aerosol cans. My mum had big 80s hair way after it had gone out of fashion. And she had loads of products around the house. I think it must have been about 11. And a mate at school said that people inhaled it. So I went home and I, and I tried it. And it was like I'd opened the door to a parallel universe. <laughs> I was walking around in this protective haze, like the world couldn't touch me. I was safe. I always had the desire to be bad. My stepdad used to hit my mum for when she'd done something that I thought was really minor, like, like she got the wrong magazine from the shop or she'd hung his jacket in the wrong spot and he couldn't find it. So if I, I thought if I did something that I got in real trouble for, it would give him perspective, I guess. So I got fucked up on as much hairspray as I could find and I went to school like that because I thought for sure I'd get kicked out or at, at the very least someone would say something. <laughs> and they didn't. <laughs> I was there the whole day and nobody said anything. <laughs> and when I got home, <laughs> apart from my mum's hair looking different, nobody noticed. I guess that should have been a red flag, but it just made me older. <laughs> my 16, I was snorting coke in club toilets with men twice my age, city boys. At 18, I'd moved in with one of them. He had this apartment that overlooked the river and we used to throw parties there. And that's where I started smoking crack. I'm not sure I really ever liked him. He wasn't attractive and he was not a nice man. But he had the drugs and I wanted the drugs, so I stayed. When I was 23, he was arrested for raping a girl at a party. I wasn't invited to that party. And somehow it was my fault because I <laughs> couldn't satisfy him. He called me a skanky drug whore. So I moved back in with my mum. She'd remarried by that point. Re-remarried. Bless her. And I realised I was unemployable. I'd not held a job since I left high school and anything I knew how to do was fine. So I was sober for a week because I couldn't afford it and my mum had changed her hair. Is that when you started the 12 steps? I'd started going to meetings, CA to start off with because the crack had really got me, but I didn't really start the steps, not really. I kept falling. When I left the apartment, I'd stolen a few things out of spite, including the DJ decks that we used to use. For, and that's how I first started earning money. I um, started out as a hobby at first and just a way to distract my mind and take myself to another place. Try and recreate the, the rush that the drugs used to give me and it, and it worked for a while. But I kept getting booked for clubs and pubs and private parties and there was always stuff available especially for the 20-something female DJ. You'd be amazed how many guys would get you fucked to fuck you. And that's when the drinking really got me. I could go nine months without any drugs, but the drinking continued. I got signed to a talent agent for about five minutes and um, and there were a few producers that wanted to work on tracks with me. I even sang on a couple, but nothing really went anywhere. 
And then there was this other girl that my producer, the one that I was working with at the time, she did a track in it and it did pretty good, but I, I felt like I was better than her. So I confronted him and I said to him, why are you working so hard for her? And I said, I told him, I'm better than her. And he said, I'm right. She wasn't as good as me, but she wasn't as fucked up as me either. And I was like, but I'm clean. I haven't done any drugs for nine months. I've been going to meetings. And he said, no, 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 no. Not the drugs. And he, he did a little sign like, I'm not sure I ever wanted to be a DJ or put tracks out. It's just it's the only thing that I've ever been able to earn money from. And I couldn't, I can't leave the scene. Even now when I go to work and I see the drugs and the alcohol there, it's like a little reminder so you order your mocktail for your first one and makes it a little bit easier each time when they come up to just, just say same again. And when you're done, you're nice to the bar manager, but you don't stick around. And when the boys come to the booth, you smile. And when they offer you a drink, you smile. And say, oh, I'd love to, but I've got somewhere else to go. Even though you don't. It's work, you know. Thanks for sharing, Liv. It's all right. Most of you have already heard it before. I'd actually uh, never heard that. I, I mean, the bit about you sleeping with men for drugs. <laughs> That turn you on, Leo. The thought of a 16-year-old girl being bent no. over a toilet. No. Yeah, I coming at her from behind. No, I didn't. Love Liv. that. I, no, I didn't mean Liv. that. Liv. There is no need to be so aggressive. He's being a pervert. Oh, I don't think. He always focuses on the sex stuff. That was such a small part of what I said. Well, Leo knows all about small parts. Fuck you, Harry. I bet you're hiding a right monster under all that blubber, aren't you? Come on, guys. Let's not make this about penises. Harry started it. I don't care who started it. Let's focus on Liv Share. I have something to ask her. All right. When did it get easier? Can you be more specific? The 12 steps. She talked about relapsing. I think you said falling. Yeah. I think that's important. We saw it tonight with Peter. We saw how easy it is. Chloe says she hasn't touched a drop in seven years since she stopped. Yeah, that's right. And I think that is amazing. We can't just sit here and assume that it's easy just because some of us have the strength to... I'm a strong person. And I'm not saying... I'm not saying you're not. I think we should talk about relapses. I had a drink at my father's funeral. Just one drink. Not just one drink. I got drunk at my father's funeral. I got drunk with my sponsor once. We went on a three-day bender together. 
I woke up in the morning of the fourth day, got out of bed, and cut my feet on a broken glass. That was just before I joined this group. And this group is how old? Oh yes, <laughs> this group is honest. It's brutal at times, but it's honest. First time I ever heard it's gonna be okay. And I believed it. That was in this room. What happened to you? I rolled around a flower bed for a bit. Are you coming in? Or are you just going to stand there? Is it okay? Of course it's fucking okay. Just talking about times when we've fallen. Relapse. I want to know why you did it. I don't mean why you hit your wife. I mean, why'd you drink all that beer? I don't know. I get that sometimes we lose our self control. I mean, I get that. I think we all do. I mean, why that beer? I've always liked microbrewery stuff. Variety is the spice of life. Uh, you, you don't get it. Um, I don't mean why that brand. I mean, why that beer? I think, if I may, I think what Mike is asking us, why? On that occasion, did you decide to drink? Am I right? Yeah, that's it. I think it'll help to know why we fall when we do and also when we don't. Yeah, to understand the difference. Right. I don't know. Did you go out to get it? The same place you've always been to. Uh, no, we moved about six months ago. Was it the pressure of the move that made you drink? No, it was six months ago. Sometimes these things have a delayed effect. No, I. I don't like the new place. It's um. Closer to work, and there's a uh, 
There's a, there's a fireplace in the living room. <laughs> fireplace? My, uh, my boss at work, he uh, asked me to do something to, um, to create an online presence or to, uh, to help create an online presence or something. It's creative, I'm not creative. I can never, uh, I can never graffiti a wall or... I'm a, I'm a numbers man. And I felt like if I didn't do it, I'd be letting him down. And he's been so good to me, so patient. So it's, it's reputation. Yeah, I guess, maybe. I get that. I mean, it's like we live in a DJing and Chloe and the clients. We get used to seeing ourselves in a certain way. And it's, it's hard. To judge not, lest you be judged. We judge ourselves. We see ourselves the way the world sees us. Or the way we think the world sees us. I've been down so many times and it's like... Sometimes it's like I'm trying to let it down because it's something I, it's something I can do. That's something I'm good at. I forget about what happens after. I took money from my daughter's savings and I stole from my daughter. No. I didn't hesitate. I know I could do it again. Hey, any of us could. That's why we're here. I have a daughter. Her name's Rebecca and I've never met her. They won't let me. I mean, she knows she's got a daddy and father's name's Michael, but uh, something, I guess. We're coming to the end of tonight's session. So if there's anyone that's been holding back or feels that they want to share something, now is the time. It's okay, I, I didn't speak for about six months of these things. Okay, anyone else? All right. So as you leave tonight, remember the 12 steps. Be aware of the three dimensions. And most importantly, come back. Thank you, everyone. Jake, it's a good group.
No problem. Do you need a lift home? It's up your way, isn't it? I'm in no hurry to get home. Well, if you're sure, I mean, we don't want to keep you away from your wife and kids for too long. Well, the kids will be in bed by now, I think. How old's your eldest now? He's uh, six next month. Planning anything for his birthday? I'm not sure. I should do something for him. We uh, had a couple of plans that kind of fell through, but uh, it just was the word. Absolutely. You're right down there. I was um thinking that um Liv, can I borrow you for a moment? Don't go anywhere. Stay. Are you, are you, are you, are you okay? Uh, uh, I, 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 I can't seem to get it 
out from under my nails. I I need to get one of them brushes. Nail, nail brushes? Hey, I told you not to go anywhere. You know, Leo, he's right. He does know who it is. The graffiti artist. It doesn't make him any less of a dick, but he does know who it is. So, I was gonna say in there that you're gonna need a sponsor if you're gonna get through the 12 steps. I've not done it before. I've never felt ready, but I feel like this is the right situation. And it, it could be good for me and for you. Is that your car? I was gonna walk to the train station, but maybe we could go together and talk about it. But I don't know. I hope so. Yeah, that's the hardest part. Mm. Oi, can I buy my lift? Mm. 